Now, before I get into talking about the D-pad press and D-pad hover movement modes and how they work, I wanted to mention that these movement modes and more climbing, the stupid arm swinging movement, and uh, teleportation and teleportation without or with the out of body camera as well. So you see a little guy moving forward and then you kind of teleport to him afterwards. Those are all included in the example template. So if you want to take a look at how those are being done, you can go ahead and open that up and read through the different blueprints and, and figure it out how that's working. Let's continue on to the D-pad press movement. What I've done is I've made two new input axes for the left D-pad and the right D-pad. Now, if you're not familiar with that, what you do is go to edit, project settings, and then under input, you've got action mappings and axis mappings. You can add and delete them as much as you want. I've got four set up for the D-pad press and the D-pad hover movement modes. So for D-pad press, I've got the right D-pad and the left D-pad. And what I've done is I've just added four for each of these because in the Vive controller we have one, two, three, and four for top, right, left, and bottom. So that's what we have here is face button one, two, three, and four for the motion controller, right? So you just go in here and you type in what you're looking for and it'll show you all of these different options. You select them. Now, one thing worth noting is face button one and three for both left and right need to be negative one instead of positive one because the thumbstick Y is positive one up here for one and then for three is negative one. Uh, Unreal sees it the opposite way. So that's why we need to make sure we do negative one, negative one here. Otherwise you'd be pressing forward, you'd be pressing one and you'd be going backwards. You'd be pressing three and you'd be going forwards. Okay, if you want that, hey, that's, that's your own thing, but I don't want that. So that's why I have these set up like that. So now let's go back. We've got this, it provides you an axis value which is a zero to one value from the controller itself. And the first thing I'm gonna do is branch. I'm gonna see a true or false statement. Are we in the left movement mode, D-pad press controller, D-pad press HMD? If we're not, I don't wanna do anything. I don't wanna do anything off of this pin that's false. If we're on either of these, either or, D-pad press controller or D-pad press HMD, I want to continue into this custom function and move forward, back, left to right, all that jazz. So I'm doing that the same thing with both the left and the right. Checking first, are we in the right movement mode to do D-pad press? Do we want to do D-pad press? If we're not, I don't want to do anything because these input axes will run every frame. So everything off of this execution pin will run every single frame. So if I can stop this, I want to. If I don't, I don't want to continue doing anything else. I don't want to cost the game any computing power doing stuff that it shouldn't be doing. So that's why this boolean's here. I want to stop it as soon as I can. And then if it is in the right movement mode, then I want to continue and figure out where I need to move. So for this function that I've made here, we've got the axis value, we've got the calling controller, so it can be the left or the right and the movement mode of left or right, okay? So let's open up this function and see what's going on inside. First thing that we're gonna do here is get the controller and see is it the left or the right, okay? If it's the left, I wanna get the motion controller thumbstick X and Y and set that to new local variables inside of this function, thumb Y and thumb X. So again, I'm only doing this because I have the left and the right in the same function. So I need to get that and set it to this variable so I can use it later down the line here. Now these functions are included with the Unreal Engine. You just search for them and you'll get it, okay? And that's gonna provide you with where the thumbstick is on its axis. Then we're gonna get the movement mode. Remember we got this back in the beginning, so left or right movement mode. We're gonna pass that in and we're gonna see if we're on the D-pad press controller or the D-pad HMD, then we wanna figure out how we're gonna move from there because we have those two different orientation types. If we're on anything else, I don't want to do anything else, okay? So for the controller, what we're going to do is we're going to come into the add movement input node. This is what's actually going to handle moving you around. Now this node is asking for a pawn, which is just this character, the world direction, the scale value, and whether or not you want to force it or not. For the world direction, in order to figure that out, in order to figure out which way is forward, 
okay? We're going to get the calling controller, whether it's the left or the right, and get the movement mode. And then we're gonna go into another function here that'll get the orientation of either the controller or the HMD. This is just another custom function that I've made here. And the difference is that it's pure, right? I checked the pure checkbox here to say, yes, true, it is a pure function. It does not need the execution pins, right? That's the difference. It can run here. It doesn't need to go through an execution pin to run. So we're gonna get the calling controller, get the movement mode, pass that in, and then we're gonna get a forward vector and we're gonna get a right vector, but we don't actually need that for the D-pad press movement. Uh, let's jump into this controller orientation to see what's going on inside of it. So inside this function here, we're gonna pass in that controller, pass in that controller and the movement control and the movement mode here called movement control in here. I think it's a better name actually because movement mode is another thing as well. Um, movement mode could be like walking, falling, swimming, whatever. So movement control is probably a better name. So I'll probably go back through and change right movement mode and left movement mode to right and left movement control because I don't want to get confused between that and swimming and flying and all that stuff too. Anyways, after we find out movement control, we're going to say, is it the HMD or is it the controller? And if it's the HMD, we're just going to get super simple here and go get the VR forward vector. Okay. Now this just needs the VR base character. This is something inside the plugin here that'll get you this vector, get you the right vector and pass it out for you. Nothing else needs to be done. For the controller, it's a little bit more complicated, but not much. First, you're going to get the calling controller, the left or the right controller, and then you're going to say, all right, what's the forward vector? Okay, cool. Now project that vector onto plane Z, okay? Not X, not Y, Z. Now what does that mean? So let me show you here, see if I can explain it. So let's take a look here on this light source here. If we were to look at the rotation of it, you see this arrow that's coming off of it? Let's say that that arrow is the vector that we're trying to project onto plane Z. So this arrow is actually down here on the Y and the X. Uh, so it, and it's also got like a negative Z value. See how it's down from a Z up here. If we wanted to project this vector, which is this location of this little arrow tip is the vector, we wanted to project that onto the Z. What we do is we just bring it straight up into the Z. That's what that does. So wherever it is between the X and the Y, it's gonna bring it up to the Z because we don't really care how high or low it is, right? We just wanna know the X and the Y values. We don't care how high or low it is, so we're gonna project it from here onto the Z value, forget the Z value completely, essentially. So, let me show you that kind of in practice. Let's skip over it. Let's say forward vector, just plug straight in here. And let's test that out and see what it's gonna do. When we are moving backwards, and I'm just gonna hold forwards here. If I move the controller up, it slows me down just about to a stop here. And then I start going backwards, it turns backwards. I'm still only pressing up. And again, it kind of slows me down. Now it speeds me back up because it's also a accounting for the Z value of that forward vector, okay? Now, with the project vector onto plane active, whoop, there we go. What's gonna happen is, it's not gonna care, it's not gonna slow me down, I'm gonna move back here and then forward again. Doesn't affect my speed, it's turning me left and right because I'm actually turning the control left and right, but it doesn't change my speed, right? doesn't bring me to a stop when I have it almost all the way up. Still the same speed. So that's what that does. I mean, technically this should be fine without that. This is just how it's set in the example template. So I brought it through. It's probably how you usually want it, but if you want your controller to slow you down when you bring it up, yeah, I mean, you could do that. I don't think there's gonna be any problem with that. Um, the normalize here after that is just gonna take it from whatever crazy value it is and just make sure it's a zero to one value, something um, that it can work with. It doesn't really care what the 5,600, whatever that it's at, it's gonna turn it into either zero to one. That's what the normalizing does. And then again, same thing for the right vector, exact same process, but um, 
the right vector is actually only used for the hover movement and it's not needed for the d-pad press movement, okay? So then we're gonna send out that forward and right vector values, send them out, and then we're going to rotate it, okay? So we're gonna bring in the forward vector, like I said, for the d-pad press, bring that into a rotate. Again, this is not a custom one, this is just built into the engine, this function. And in order to rotate it, what we need is this make rotate from X, okay? So remember these local variables that we set earlier, thumb Y and thumb X? Again, from just the thumbstick values of Y and X. What we're gonna do here is again, use something that's built into the engine, which is just make rotator from X. And from there, it's gonna give you a vector, right? Right click on that and split struct pin. And then you'll have this just like up here. And because again, Vive and Unreal don't agree with each other, the X and the Y are funky. So we're going to move the Y value into the XX and the X value into the XY. And then Z zero, because we don't care. And that's gonna change our vector here. We're gonna rotate it from the forward vector based on these. And then return that to the final word location for our movement input. Now, if we didn't add this rotation, show you real quick, it's gonna be all wacky, okay? Down is now um, down still, but up is down as well. And then right is moving me forward, left is moving me forward, and there's no nothing else, okay? So up and down are both down, left and right are both up. Not, not really what I want. So I'm gonna leave that plugged in. For the HMD, it's the same thing, except we don't need the controller's orientation, right? We're gonna do the same functions, get controller or HMD orientation, the custom function that we built that's pure, so we don't need the execution pin. It's gonna do the exact same thing, but only if we're HMD, it'll go down and just bring in these vectors again, okay? and then rotate again with these same thumb values that we did before, exact same thing. Okay, so that's D-pad press movement, that's it. That once you get here and you add in all your variables, the axis value is just, the it's gonna be a one or a negative one uh, because you're actually using the D-pad pressed, there's no in between there. So that's it. Uh, force is something that you'd only be using if you're already using is move input ignored because it uh, ignores that, <laughs> it ignores the ignore. But if you're not using, you know, is move input ignored yet, which we're not yet, and we don't have to worry about this, but generally you probably wanna leave this off because you don't wanna be able to move if you have move input ignored. You usually have it on to stop the player from moving, okay? So you're probably always gonna have that off. Now let's take a look at the hover movement. This again, I've added more inputs. Okay, so back in the project settings, let's close up these and open up the left thumbstick and the right thumbstick. These are simpler, scale value is one, and we're just gonna get the thumbstick value for the left and the right motion controller. Okay, and we're gonna pass that through. Again, we're gonna do this check. We're going to see, are we in the hover movement mode? If we are, cool, let's figure out which way to go and how fast to go, that kind of thing. But if we're not, let's make sure we're not doing anything. Again, these are firing every frame, okay? They're like event tick. You don't wanna use them if you don't have to. Now, here we're doing this function a little bit differently than before with the D-pad press movement. Here, you know, we're passing in the motion controller, the movement mode and all that. Here's a different way to do it where you just have a Boolean. So the Boolean just says, hey, am I the right controller or the left controller? And then since we're on the right thumbstick, yep, we're gonna check it true. And we're on the left one, we're gonna say no. And let's hop in and see how that's used. First thing we're gonna do is take that branch, take the Boolean, make a branch, and then say, hey, it, yep, it's right. So let's move on the right movement mode and let's figure things out from there. And if it's left, let's do the same thing. So these are the exact same logic going on here. So on the right movement mode, if it's D-pad hover or D-pad hover HMD, Again, we're already doing this out here, but it's just, it doesn't hurt to do it again. 
And um, we also want to be checking these thumbstick values. If they're at zero, then we probably don't even have our thumb on the D-pad. So we don't want to do anything, right? So if it's thumbstick Y or thumbstick X is more than zero, this is a not equal. So you just pull off and say not equal. Got the little exclamation mark and a, um, I can't even see the exclamation mark. Oh, there you go. There's the exclamation mark hiding back there. So a little exclamation mark and a um, equal sign. So it's not equal to zero. We are actually doing something with the D-pad. Our thumb is somewhere on there. So we've established that we are moving around somewhere on the D-pad. We want to continue and figure out how to move. Okay. So this is the same function, the pure function that we had before, figuring out the controller and HMD orientation. Again, passing in the right motion controller and right movement mode or left motion controller, left movement mode, and then figuring out, hey, we're on the hover HMD or the hover controller movement modes. We're going to figure out the forward vectors and the right vectors here, and then pass that out. After we pass them out, since we're gonna be using them directly either for the left or the right inside this function, we're gonna need these new local variables here, forward vector and right vector. And then we're going to pass them into the add movement input, right? So we've got that for forward and right. And again, for the Y, we're going to times that by negative one because five and Unreal do not agree on what's forward and backwards as far as the thumbstick goes, okay? So for the Y value, negative one, X value, one is fine for the five. And that'll be the scale, so backwards or forwards, okay? Same exact thing down here, just the left controller instead of the right. Same functionality, everything's working the same. And that's about it. I think we're about done with the hover and the D-pad press movement modes. Fantastic.